Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. Today I'm finally going to make the review of this great pen. And the pen that I'm going to review today is very special because it was on my wish list of pens for the year of 2020 and I got it and so I'm very happy for it and I have to thank Mr. Salvatore Matrone, the man behind the Leonardo Officina Italiana brand for sending me this pen for review and to keep it. I'm so happy with it, so thank you so much. This is something that I really, really enjoy and I'm not saying this because I received the pen for review and had to and I get to keep it. I'm saying this because it's really true. I really, really enjoy this pen. It is so beautiful. And so, let's start seeing what is inside. First, we have here the box. I showed you when I made the unboxing. The box came a little bit destroyed, so I changed the box to, for another one. Uh, and kept this outer sleeve because this is the same. So, the pen is the Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Grande, the Pistone version. Which means this is the Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Grande, but with a real piston filling system. Now, let's take... The, the pen arrives in these, like, of kind of champagne um, colored outer sleeve and it says Momento Zero Pistone Grande, Fatto a Mano in Italia sorry for my bad Italian and then Leonardo Ficino Italiana, more than 45 years of experience from father to son and the story goes on and you take this sleeve away and then you have a cardboard box an outer box that says Leonardo and Officina Italiana and then the logo, which is these two wings uh, embossed in a shiny black on a matte black surface. You open this outer box, you have lots of package here, and you have a big black pen case. And in this pen case that has these kind of leathery something, uh, finish, you open it and you have on the inside of the, of the lid of the box you have Leonardo Fici in Italiana and then the logo with this very soft and nicey cozy uh, lining and here you have the pen and an ink uh, bottle. The ink bottle that I received is this sepia. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that the bottles that come with this Leonardo Ficini Italiano Momento Zero Grande pens are uh, random, I think. But uh, Mr. Salvatore, asked, uh, Mr. Salvatore uh, asked me which ink I would like to try and I said the sepia because I already tried two other inks from Leonardo. So he sent me this bottle, very nice. I'm, it's not the ink that is inside this pen, just because I didn't think it was a good match for the, for the color of the pen. <laughs> That's not something that I usually care for, but I think when I like a pen so much, I want to get the perfect match. And the perfect match doesn't mean it has to be a perfect match between the color of the pen and the color of the ink, but it needs to make sense. And I don't think this ink makes sense with this particular pen, but you'll see this ink inside some other pen very soon and I will review the ink also, but not inside this pen. And the pen comes in this plastic sleeve, you take it out in a very noisy action, you close the box, put the pen down. Okay, so we have here the pen and this is the Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero in the sand color. This is an amazing finish. I really, really like it. So, what do I have to say about this pen? First, 
this pen is very similar to the Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Grande in the regular version. This is the newer version. I will zoom in a little bit. So this is a, the, the regular version which had... No, let's not uncap this. Let's take this out. It had this piston which is like kind of a very large uh, ink, ink uh, converter that is glued to the section so this is not removable and this is the kind of way you can operate this piston either taking the barrel apart or just taking the blind cap dipping the pen in ink and then operating just the end of that kind of converter on this piston on pistone version of the that you have here in the sand it is um, a real a normal regular kind of piston where you unscrew this turning knob and it will operate the, the piston that will run through the, the barrel inside the barrel so you have a very large ink capacity uh, of around 1.5 milliliters which is quite nice and this is a a wonderful pen. So let's take a look. The design is the same, so the same kind of design, which is a, I would say, a vintage Italian design. With it has a conical top of the of the cap. Then you have a clip that is quite slim and very very springy, and it also has this little wheel that some Italian pens have to slide better into the pockets, but it wouldn't really need that because it's quite springy, but this, is, this will be even easier. Then you have three cap rings, the cap tapers down there, and then you have the barrel quite long, that tapers down to the end with a, barrel, with a ring, chrome colored ring, separating the barrel from the turning knob. And this is it on the outside. There is an engraving on the pen. Where is it? It's there, but okay. Now I think you can see it. That, oops. And it says Leonardo Officina Italiana and then number 47, 467, which is the serial number of this particular pen. The cap comes off by just a little more than one turn and you have a section with this kind of odd shape that is very... Uh, I only saw these on Leonardo pens and some copies of Leonardo pens. I never saw this kind of shape of section before but I find it very very comfortable I wouldn't say that if I just looked at the pen, but I, when using the pen, I find this kind of uh, uh, section very comfortable. Then you have a little step up with a ring there, separating the, let's say, the threads that are not sharp from the barrel. And then the pen is quite long and quite good to use. We have here a steel nib. You can also have these pens with gold nib. And this is a fine nib and it is beautiful and you have an ebonite feed which is quite nice because the ebonite feed in my opinion increases the ink flow and makes the flow more perfect because the pen it seems that a, an ebonite feed is always wet which is something that i really like so this pen that you have here costs 245 euros. It's not inexpensive, but we have to say it is an Italian pen and usually Italian pens always retail for a little more than pens from other places, usually. And it has a unique resin. I, I love the, the kind of the resin that is used here. And it also um, is a piston filler. 
it has steel nib, so some people may think it is a little bit too expensive, but it depends really on each, yeah, everyone's preference. The kind of material is very, very beautiful. Here you have the, the same kind of material also on this dark Hawaii, and you can see that it is like there are stripes of the material that are cut, glued together or bonded together, as you can see, and then it is turned from this. So you, you even have this kind of shapes that almost remind us of the Arco finish. It's not Arco, but it, it also, it almost reminds us of that. I think the, let me just show off a little bit. I love this material. In this color, in these light conditions that I have here, it looks a little bit more on the cool side, on a cool tone, but it's not really. It is, it is a, a warm tone, but I think that this pen can look in many different ways depending on the type of flight that is hitting the pen. If you have the pen on the outside in a very bright place, it has a very different color than where you, when you're seeing that in other places. I really like it and this pen, the sands go perfectly with this dark Hawaii. Let's call it like the sea and the, and the sand. I, th I think this, the name of the pen, calling it sand and having this kind of material that I had a viewer that told me that uh, the finish remembered him of horn. Yes, and it looks like almost a horn that was shaped, but it is a resin that is beautiful and it has some patterns that are really typical of some vintage pens and I have to say that I love that. You see, in this lighter stripe there, the pattern is like this. It, the best way that I have to describe this, the very personal way, is that some materials remind me of fish skin. And I only associate this kind of fish skin to vintage pens. And so, it, and this is a very positive thing to me. I really love this kind of pattern in, in some pens. Now, let's see some comparisons because I know that's why you like my videos, or some of you do. Uh, Let's see some comparison, but just let me show one more thing before of that. I, I think I showed you all the parts of the pen. Let me just show you that the pen is perfectly sized to be, to write with, with it and post it. But if you want, the pen posts quite deeply and doesn't become back heavy, which is quite interesting in such a big pen. But it is perfect. So if you like to use your pen post it, you can do it. I don't like it, so I will use it this way. Now that I've talked about this, let me just compare the pen with the Momento Zero Grande Dark Hawaii. So you have some comparisons here. I usually do my size comparison with just two pens, but I think I'll go into some more. Here you have the regular size Momento Zero, and as you may see, this is a smaller pen. However, all of those have number five, number six nibs, sorry. And this is another Leonardo. This is Leonardo Messenger Orange, which is a big pen, but just a little bit smaller than the Momento Zero Grande. So the Grande is really Grande, and Grande means big. Now, the usual, usual this is comparing the Leonardo pen with other Leonardo pens. Now, let's take a look how the pen compares with the Parker Centennial Du Fold, which is a pen that I usually make this comparison. This big red is a pen that I really love, so it is all the time on these reviews. And you have here also the Lamy uh, LX Ruthenium, and you can see that Leonardo is longer than both the other two pens and uncapping the three of them, we'll have a size comparison for 
what you get when you're writing with it. And you can see that the size of the Leonardo is about the same size of the Parker Centennial Blue Fold. Obviously, the Lamy one is very is much smaller. It is a different shape, so not comparable at all. But this is a longer pen. And just for comparison, because I, I think this is useful and I love to do that, there are here some other pens that I really like. I have here another piston filler pen that is quite well known, the Pelican M605, because it, is, uh, it has silver trim, and this is bigger, as you may see. I have here another Italian pen that is quite big, which is the the Visconti Homo Sapiens, Bronze Age, and the Leonardo is bigger. I have here the Tibaldi N60 Samarkand finish, which is almost the same size, but this is a cartridge converter pen, this is a power filler pen, and here you have another piston filler pen, which is a Montblanc 149, which is almost the same size of the Leonardo, but a little bigger. Let me just, because we are here, into this, and we already know that this video will be long, let me just uncap all the pens and show them to you for a fair size comparison. And here you can see the size comparison. Obviously, the Leonardo is the biggest, quite similar to the Tivaldi. However, the Mont Blanc 149 nib is a bigger nib. And so, this is almost all that I had to tell you. There is just one detail that some people uh, talk to me with some worry is that this pen has a ring, a metal ring, uh, between the section and the nib. These kind of rings in some pens, and in some quite expensive pens, they may, come, they may become rusty and the, the, this, the, the plating may come off. I didn't, uh, Mr. Salvatore uh, assured me that it wouldn't happen. And I, I've been using this Leonardo, uh, the, the Momento Zero Grande, Dark Hawaii, for a long time, and there is no um, oxidation on that part, so it really works fine. So, I'm quite happy, I think everything is okay. I would not worry too much about that ring to get um, some oxidation, and I think if you did, if you talked with your retailer or directly with Leonardo, I'm almost sure they would uh, work out your problem because I think Leonardo is really a great brand that takes a lot of care with the customers. Now, let's see the pen on paper. And here we are with the pen and paper and let's start writing with it. So this is the Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Grande Sand with a Steel Fine Nib. So, huge name. The paper that I'm using is the usual Rodia dot pad. I think it's quite a standard paper that behaves very well for ink for ink and pen reviews. And the ink inside is the diamine, or diamine, or diamine, not sure, Makassar, which is a very dark brown that I really enjoy. And so, as you may see, this pen writes perfectly well, and it will not fail. It is, it is very pleasant. To use. Really it is. And let's just see some of the characteristics. The steel nib has some feedback, but in a pleasant way. 
it's not scratchy. It's very smooth, but you can feel just a little bit of feedback and I find that very nice. The fine line is really fine. Actually, it is even finer than the fine line that I have on the Leonardo Momento Zero Grande Dark Hawaii. You can see it is a thicker line there. This line is quite good. You can have some natural line variation. You can see that the down strokes are a little bit uh, thicker, but I didn't make any pressure. And if you want, you can press it a little bit harder and get more line variation. So some line variation is possible. It's not a flexi nib, but it will give some expressivity to your writing. Now, about the wetness. I would say this is quite wet for such a fine writer and that's perfect. There is nothing for me to complain about. And writing in reverse, you can see it writes perfectly well. It is sharper, not scratchy, but sharper on the paper and very thin line that is less visible, but it works really fine. So, this is really a great pen. I'm really excited with this. If you ask me, is this inexpensive? No, it's not inexpensive. Is it worth the money? Yes, it is. If I didn't get this pen for review from Leonardo, I think sooner or later I would buy this pen. And I think I might even sell a couple of my pens just to buy this one because I think this is one of the most and, and that's true it's one of the most beautiful pens around in my opinion I love the resin and the writing experience is good the brand is interesting and also this brand is innovating and making nice materials nice pens they have good ideas so I think there is some value in that because we can say that almost everything is already invented in fountain pen world. If someone is still creating something else, I think there's a lot of value in that. So thank you, Mr. Salvatore, for sending me this pen. I really enjoy it. I love it, I have to say. Thank you all for watching the video, I hope you liked it. If you did, please don't forget to like and to subscribe the channel and I will see you soon for another pen video. Bye!